Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. I am joined by Kathy Cronin, Nancy, and Linda Baker. Thank you so much for being with us. We have a great topic, but before we get started, please join me in prayer. Let's take a breath together and go within. Father, Mother, God, thank you for letting us be together in love and in laughter. Thank you, God, for letting us discuss, fellowship, and share for all of the people that we can touch with our words. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So I have been very much enjoying this book, and we've talked about it a couple of times. This is When God Winks at You by Squire Rushnell. And I found a fun story. It's short, but I think we can all relate to it. It's called, Whoa. <laughs> the day was slipping away. Mary Jane Waldorf fleetingly looked at the clock, anxiously hoping she'd conquered this new chicken recipe before her husband got home. Cooking was not her forte. Maybe I shouldn't have taken this on tonight, she thought. With a motherly glance, she saw that Kurt, her four-year-old, was still busy playing with the coloring book and crayons in the middle of the kitchen floor. She smiled, watching the intent look on his face as the crayon moved across the page and outside the lines. Her attention was drawn back to the chicken. Why was this so hard? Aren't women supposed to be born knowing how to cook a simple meal? But this recipe was asking for things she just didn't understand. A sudden irrational idea flashed into her mind, a momentary escape from this frustration. Come on, Kurt, let you and me hang that teddy bear picture I, I brought down for your room. Scooping up her son, Mary Jane knew that this was the task she could handle with ease. That chicken can just wait, she thought. After placing a hook on the bedroom wall, she stepped back, tilted her head slightly, and said, How's that? asking her son. Crash! It was the sound of breaking glass coming from elsewhere in the house. Mary Jane ran to the kitchen and was flabbergasted. The chandelier had fallen from the ceiling and smashed to smithereens, right where Kurt would have been sitting and coloring only moments before. Looking at the shards of glass and splintered metal, Mary Jane breathed a sigh of relief and rolled her eyes skyward, acknowledging the wonderful God wink that had unreasonably motivated her to leave her cooking chores and scoop up her son and take him to safety just at the nick of time. And then there's a little author note I'll add to this. Isn't it amazing? If you totaled up the number of times you were just about to step off a curb but were distracted by something, when you found yourself almost striding in front of a fast moving car, when a small voice deep within, just in the nick of time, stopped you from taking that step. I suspect you'd be amazed. Sometimes it's called instinct. I call it the small still voice of God. I just love that story. I've really been enjoying this book. Um, and that's kind of the topic. Can you guys comment or think about a time when this has happened to you? In the nick of time, you made a decision that made right what could have gone very, very wrong. I'm anxious to hear your stories. I'm sorry, I haven't had the experience, but it makes me wonder what, what I'm in for. <laughs> it, it was a lovely story, very much so. 
and and I know that there are people out there that that's happened to, and I'm going to sit back and listen to the other two panelists because I bet maybe they have a story to tell. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'll go next. Um, Thanksgiving time, I was thinking about all the way, I mean, I've been able to cook a turkey probably a hundred times, but last year it just did not seem like that's something that I wanted to do. But we got the turkey and I made plans for it, but it just, just didn't seem like I didn't sit down and figure out, you know, how many pounds have to be cooked by whatever and make a schedule like usual. I just didn't. And then all of a sudden, this friend called me up and said, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And I said, well, we were going to cook a turkey, but I'm just not feeling up to it. Why don't you come to our house? And it's it's not quite the same as your story, but we had a wonderful time. We were able to cook the turkey later when I had the energy to do it. And if I hadn't listened, I could have easily said, no, 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 it's okay. We'll, we'll, you know, get it. We'll have it done and it'll be all right. But I didn't need to do that. I, I was gracious and it, it was unlike me. Usually I'm, used to doing everything myself but asking letting someone help me was a new thing for me and so um i i'm really appreciative of learning to do that and somebody on this panel knows exactly what i'm talking about linda <laughs> I was I was invited to Linda's house. I was gonna say, well, thank you for acknowledging Linda being the one reaching out to you and giving her the credit for, you know, thinking of you at Thanksgiving and for acknowledging that you allowed her to do that. You know, that was really great that you did that. So, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, I. I thought about this and I've tried to think of times and I know there's been numerous times that God winked in my life and and I've been sent in a different direction or something else. And one that comes to mind, and this is not my story, but it was a story of somebody I knew. Um, and it was the um, he was flying for work uh, from San Diego to the East Coast and he was doing a connection in Chicago. And um, so when he went to make the connection, he missed the connection. His suitcase had caught it, was on that plane, and that plane went down. And he said he stood there in the terminal looking out on the runway where this plane had basically gone down, saw his clothes all over the place and said, you know, God, for some reason, I was not to be on that plane, but my clothes are all over the, you know, the runway. But and that was a God wink moment. And he recognized that at that what he shared in the story that he was talking about was that he really recognized those times that we sort of go, you know, God saying your time isn't isn't over. There's still more for you to do. And um so I, I can think about that that times and and we just there's so many times um, is trusting my instinct is sometimes that trusting that instinct is when you're re responding to the God winks in your life. And um, we just recently are having some um, work done in our backyard and the planting and um and my husband and I were disagreeing about what we were going to do because we have problems with gophers um, eating our plants. And um, and so I said, I want to put I want to put gopher cages around it. And he said, no, no, no I don't want to do that. And, and a lot of times I succumb and say, 
okay, all right, you don't want to do it. We're not going to do it. And this time I said, nope, this time I'm going to go with my instinct and I'm going to follow that. We are putting those gopher cages down because I don't want us, you know, lose some more plants to these friendly little animals. They can, you know, do eat elsewhere. But so it sort of was like that time I finally said, listen to your instinct and stand for that. So I, I also wonder how many times we don't, you know, those that still small voice that says, this is what you need to do that, you know, that knocking on that door of our mind and, and we choose to ignore it. And so um, I just thought that was a really great little story is like, she could have stayed there and continued to struggle with her meal, but it was like, oh, let's go hang this picture. And you know, so um, I can say there's probably been, been numerous times in my life that at this moment I can't think of them, but I know God's that still small voice I trust and I put my trust in that to, to know that I'm being nudged in a different direction. I hate that cosmic two by four, though, when I ignore those those voices. So um, it, the lessons will come back around. So I, I just really glad you brought that and shared that moment. And it's like. Yeah, I had I've had a lot of moments in my life. So, does anybody else have anything they want to add? Yeah. Oh, then I will close this in prayer. Yeah. God, our heavenly Father, we know you shine upon us, and you give us the life that we were meant to lead, the moments that we were to fulfill. And you guide us to avoid those that are not in our best interest. We open ourselves to those still small voices that tell us or nudge us in the right direction, that show us the way. And for those times that you protect us from our harm, we are so grateful and thankful for your well-being and keeping us safe and here and happy. Amen. So I want to thank um, the panel uh, for being with us today. And it was so nice to share this topic. And for those who have joined us on um, uh, YouTube, and please subscribe and let us know that you would like to hear more of these topics that we share. Um, leave your comments. We will answer any comments. And we're open to any suggestions on what you would like to hear or us discuss or topics you would like to have more information about. So we're always here to serve and you can always reach out to the church. And um, so we thank you for being with us and we look forward to the next time that this panel can be together. Amen. Keep Bye. Easter open, Nancy. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook. Search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.